Welcome to the second episode in a Legendarium series called Revolt Against King John. In this episode, The Siege of Rochester Castle, we will talk about how the barons of England forced King John to agree to respect their rights in a document called Magna Carta. King John immediately went back on the promises he made in Magna Carta, which led to a civil war between him and his barons. The first great battle of the civil war was the grueling siege of Rochester Castle. Early in his reign, King John lost all his father's territories in Normandy to King Philip Augustus of France. This proved a disaster for the Norman barons of England, who lost huge estates in Normandy, their ancestral homeland. The barons then faced a second disaster when King John rose very high taxes on them to finance a war to reclaim Normandy. And then King John proceeded to waste all of that tax money and the lives of many English soldiers in a failed invasion of Normandy. In October of 1214, King John returned to England to face a very angry opposition led by Stephen Langton, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Normally, rebels unhappy with the king would rally around an heir or claimant to the throne, but with no one available to challenge King John, the rebels instead used reform as a means to gain support for their cause. King Henry I, John's great-grandfather, had introduced a charter in 1100, promising fair laws for all his subjects, and that allowed the rebel barons to present their tax-cutting reforms as restoring ancient liberties to all of the English king's subjects. They used this program of reform to rally support until they were able to force the king to meet them at Runnymede on the River Thames. On June 15, 1215, Archbishop Stephen Langton and William Marshall, a renowned knight and marshal of England, forced the king to sign Magna Carta. Among the conditions that King John agreed to was the barons' demand to appoint a committee of 25 men who would oversee all the decisions that King John made. This effectively took all power from the crown. And the barons distrusted the king so much that they made several copies of the document and sent them around England for safekeeping. And of course, as soon as King John signed the document, he started looking for a way to get out of it. King John approached Pope Innocent III and got him to agree that the document was invalid because the barons had forced the king to sign it against his will. The Pope excommunicated the barons and served an interdict on London forbidding burials until Magna Carta was gone. The furious barons used the traditional method of finding a new king, and they sent messengers to France and offered Prince Louis, the son of Philip Augustus of France, the English crown if he would help them to get rid of the hated King John. Of course, Prince Louis agreed and immediately began raising a French army to help the rebels run John out of England. In response, King John traveled to the continent to raise an army of mercenaries to confiscate the rebel barons' estates. The rebel barons responded by raising their own armies. When John returned to England in September of 1215, he hurried towards the rebel-held Rochester Castle. Located in Kent, on the road to London itself, John himself had rebuilt and fortified the castle at great expense fearing at the time it would be needed to help repel a French invasion after he lost Normandy. One can imagine that King John never imagined that Rochester Castle would be helping to repel his own invasion, and it was a formidable obstacle indeed. Rochester Castle included a 130-foot-tall stone keep with two curtain walls, one of which was 20 feet high. About 140 rebel soldiers held the castle hoping for reinforcements from Prince Louis of France. When the rebels first saw King John coming, they streamed out of the castle on a causeway built across a nearby river. Supported by archer fire from the walls of Rochester Castle, the rebels drove away King John's men. However, when John made his second attack, he had a plan this time. 
As he approached the bridge, John had his men hurl clay pots filled with pitch at the wooden causeway, and then King John had his archers fire flaming arrows at the bridge, engulfing it and the rebel soldiers on it with flame. The burning bridge collapsed, and the surviving rebels retreated to Rochester Castle, where they found their problems had only begun. The rebels had not expected a siege, imagining that they could use that causeway to attack King John's men at will. They found themselves trapped in an overcrowded castle, not only filled with men, but animals. They had no way to dispose of excrement and urine, which made the castle very smelly inside. And even worse, the rebels had only stocked up a week's worth of food. Very soon, the rebel soldiers were reduced to eating their own horses and sometimes each other. On the other hand, John's army was well supplied from the surrounding countryside, and John even held royal feasts within sight of the walls to torment the hungry rebels inside with the sight and smell of royal spreads. John also pelted the walls of Rochester Castle with stones and hurled dead animals and mountains of excrement inside to make conditions even fouler. However, John found himself short on time too. He had to pay his army a thousand pounds a day, an astronomical sum that would soon bankrupt him. Even worse, John didn't know when Prince Louis would arrive with his French army, and after five weeks of waiting for the rebels to starve, John could simply wait no longer. So John brought in a new weapon so lethal that the church had banned it three times the crossbow. These weapons did not require much training, and a bolt could puncture male armor at close range. Crossbow snipers took a heavy toll on the rebels, picking off men on the wall one by one from distances as great as 500 feet. By the end of the sixth week, there were less than a hundred rebels left, but word came that the French fleet of Prince Louis had arrived. With no choice, John ordered his men to dig under the walls. While crossbowmen and trebuchets kept battering the barons, sappers dug huge tunnels underneath the walls of Rochester Castle. Afterwards, John sent out a royal decree calling for 40 fat pigs to be brought to him. John slaughtered the pigs and stuffed the mine with mountains of pig fat. When set alight, the lard created a blazing inferno of 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to crack the castle walls. Thick stone foundations blackened and finally crumbled. The southeast tower collapsed completely, and even then, the rebels fought a last desperate stand within the castle. However, the starving and outnumbered men simply could not fight for long. Yet the killing did not stop there. John wanted revenge. He ordered the rebel soldiers' hand and feet chopped off. He wanted to hang the survivors, but his advisors convinced him to hang only a single crossbowman. While King John won the first battle of the Civil War, he still faced the French army of Prince Louis, only now arriving in England to help the rebel barons. How will things turn out? We'll find out in the next episode. That wraps things up for this installment of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.